We need one more. There we go. So if uh, any of the asteroids are intersecting with our player's bounding box, um, we just want to say um, asteroid.isVisible equals false. And that's as simple as it, as it is for um, checking collision between our asteroids on, that are on the screen and, and seeing if they're colliding with our player ship. Okay, so now if we save, well, let's comment this before I get too far here. Check to see if any of the asteroids are colliding with our player ship. If they are, um, set um, is visible to false, which in turn will remove them f from the asteroid list. Okay, and you remember when we did that, um, because uh, what we're doing in uh, in our asteroid, um, it's not it's in the uh, game one. So uh, when we're loading our asteroids, remember we're checking to say if any of the asteroids were were destroyed or they're invisible, right? If the if visibility was set to false, then we're gonna remove them from the list. So it's just gonna take it out of the game. Okay, so let's go back up, so we can save this build and run and we should have collision between our ship and the asteroids okay see they're colliding the ships now colliding with the asteroids and what it's doing is it's setting their visibility to false every time the ship collides with them so it's removing them from the list and the reason the asteroids keep coming is because uh, whenever we remove asteroids from the list it's going to say hey are there five asteroids on the screen if there isn't we're going to randomly spawn more until there is five and we're spawning them at a random number off the top of the screen and a random number on our x-axis to make them left and right, you know. So, so they're going to randomize every time they get destroyed, which is kind of cool because they'll come from different areas every time, okay. So that's as simple as it is. Um, I'll go over this one more time. Um, the code for checking uh, for collision is really easy in x and a. It's just you set your bounding box for every... Um, every object that you want in the game to collide with something and then you check to see if that bounding box is intersecting with the other one's bounding box and if it is you can just remove it from the list that's another reason why we moved our asteroids to a list because it'll it's it's as easy as just making the visibility false and it'll remove it from the list okay so um since our bullets are handled mainly in our our player class it's going to be a little more work to get them to say hey let's check the bullets that are within our player class and compare them to the asteroids which is in the asteroid list which is in our game one um, it takes a little more work but it's not really a big deal okay because this is so easy because um, our asteroid list is in game one.cs and we have an instance of our player class um, in the game one.cs so it makes things a little easier but since our bullets are all inside, um, the objects are all instantiated inside our player class, we don't have direct access to our game one that see us, um, in theory, I guess. Okay. So now we're going to uh, we're going to do a uh, for statement here, and I'll explain this um, a little bit as we go on. And then afterwards, I'll go over it in detail. Okay. So this is going to say um, check to see. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through our bullet list which is located in our player class and um, um, if if any asteroids come in contact with these bullets then we're gonna um, set the visibility on the bullets and the asteroids to false so essentially we're gonna uh, destroy bullet and asteroid okay okay so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna say for just gonna be a basic for statement like we've been doing int i equals zero if i is less than the p dot bullet list dot count and the reason we need to put the p here is because remember um, the bullet list is in our player class um, then i plus plus Okay, and this is what we want to do in here. Oops, I put a comma here. 
if i is less than the boltless count oh then i plus plus yeah it's late again here i go putting out tutorials when it's a little late okay and then we're going to say another if statement um, inside of this for loop so while it's iterating through this bullet list we want to say if um, asteroid which is a that bounding box intersects with uh, p bullet list um, at index i that bounding box then we're going to do two things we're going to say um, the asteroid dot is visible equals false and our um, um, p dot bullet list dot element at i is visible equals false okay and this is the first time actually I've used um, in X and A anyways the element at um, here because uh, what this is saying and and if I mouse over it what it's doing is it says it re it returns the element at a specified index in the sequence okay so uh, what this is saying um, we're gonna iterate through our bullet list okay and if the asteroids bounding box any of the as since we're um, for each asteroid in our asteroid list uh, for any if any of those asteroids bounding box intersect with um, the current index in our bullet list bounding box because it's just iterating through here right and if if that bounding box is uh, intersecting with any of the bullets in our list then we're gonna make the asteroid invisible which is gonna remove it from the list essentially destroying it and we're gonna take um, whatever element um, is hitting that um, asteroid in our bullet list invisible as well um, so it's gonna destroy the bullet and the asteroid and that's it I mean I know I say that's it like you know oh, this is a piece of cake but it it is kind of a lot to take in um, um, because you know we are using lists again and like I said it can get a little complicated I'm gonna be honest with you this took me a good hour to kind of sort this out and just figure out how I wanted to work this and it seems that this works pretty well okay so we're gonna save this off uh, build it so we have we have our check here so that our ship collides with uh, the, the uh, asteroids and we have our check here that's checking for the bullets if the bullets collide with the asteroid and if any of that happens it's going to set those to false and it's going to set the, the asteroids to false if they're hitting the ship okay build it play okay so now I'm not going to shoot yet but we do still have collision with our ship right so it's respawning sorry respawning the asteroids okay we have collision with our ship if I shoot See, and you notice how, um, that's why I'm having questions about the rectangles and where they actually start at. Because you notice if I'm shooting to the left of the bullet, you can kind of see that it's going through it here. Um, but if I go, and if I go a little too far to the right, it'll still catch the collision on the right side, even though it's a little further out. So what it seems like is the rectangle is almost starting from the center of the sprite and, and going right from there instead of the top left corner of the sprite. Um, which I guess there's a way to, we could fix that by, you know, hard coding some dimensions in there. Um, but I think I'm going to look up the rectangle class um, and see exactly how that's handled and where the rectangle is actually drawn from on the X and Y. But we do have collision. It's a little off right now, but I'll, I'll fix that in the next video. I'll get some information fix that in the next video. So we have collision with our bullets to our asteroids, our ship to our asteroids. And that's what we wanted. So now that we actually have collision, uh, we can move forward with a few other things like, you know, adding player health and reducing it every time an asteroid hits us. And, um, and you know, we can work on, uh, I haven't gotten much into animated sprites and I never really used them too much, at least not in Allegro. Um, I mean, in, in XNA, sorry, I have done some in Allegro. But um, I'm going to do some research on that as well, and we can get some explosions coming in here. And then, but I think the next video is going to I'm going to be creating a um, font class, so we can display some basic text to the screen. I mean, eventually the text is going to be used for keeping score, and uh, you know, um, holding stuff like 
uh, you know, our name, and then we could put our health next to it and stuff like that. But for now, I'm actually going to just use that text as kind of like debugging. You know, it's, I'm going to have it display how many asteroids are currently on the screen, how many bullets are out on the screen, just, you know, so we can see. Maybe I'll put a frames per second on there. Uh, but with that, guys, I know I'm, I'm going on and on here, but... Uh, we have the code now. Uh, if you want me to re-explain all this stuff at all, just let me know. Um, it is pretty simple once you look at it and just put, you know, long, keep long comments, man. I don't, you know, I've always done it just so I understand exactly what's going on. Uh, even though I do in my head, it's just nice to say, oh, I can read this and that's exactly what's happening. And now I understand this code a little better. But uh, that's how I learned uh, is to make really long drawn out comments. <laughs> uh, I suppose if that helps, then uh, do that. Okay. But uh, if you like the video, guys, toss me a like. Um, like I say, every video, you know, if you want to see when I put out a new video right away, uh, go ahead and subscribe, and it'll show up in, on your main page saying that I posted it. Um, I'm really having fun with this series, and I've gotten a lot of good per, uh, private messages and some feedback on it. And um, until next time, guys, like I said, next one's going to be the font class, um, and that should be pretty simple as well. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.